Agent Carter, Season 2, Episode 4, Thoughts. This episode is called Smoke and Mirrors, another episode I love. Spoilers throughout this video for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive in. So, yes, this episode does that thing that can be quite effective and I think is here where the hero... Yeah, the protagonist and antagonist are contrasted in part through showing us what their lives have been like, you know, and it is very much, a, you know, both Peggy and, now I don't know if I should keep calling her Whitney or Agnes, hmm. I guess, yes, Whitney, because that is what she she's choosing to go by, I feel like. So that's, yes. So Peggy and Whitney both had this childhood where they weren't really being encouraged to, you know, follow up on their passions. But, and, and I do appreciate there's definitely a, an element of class struggle here that Peggy had a much less stressful and and unpleasant life than Whitney, but both of them wanted something that their mother and society didn't think they could do, and Peggy, you know, and yeah, both of them ended up doing it. Peggy did it for good, and Whitney did it for evil. So, yeah, very... Very nicely done there. And I, I like the detail that apparently Peggy Peggy's mother never knows where her blasted handkerchief is, which does feel like the kind of quirk that yeah, you know, she's she's got a million things to do, so she's you know, misplacing the handkerchief. Yeah, I will say the at first I didn't realize what the point of that opening flashback was Though I do quite like Peggy as a child playing the hero in this like Arthurian legend or like medieval mid medieval adventure story, you know she didn't want to be the one being saved. She wanted to do the saving, but you know then it they choose to end it with you know her mother saying one day you're gonna have to start acting like a lady. Smash cut, she's still not acting like a lady all these years later. You know, I'm really glad there was more to it than that, because, the you know, when I just saw that, I was like, really? That's That felt so random, but no, they were going somewhere with it. Holy craps, Dr. Wilkes is smooth. Like, the, you know, there's that line about, like, the, the... You know, she she says, I'm very sorry that you're in this situation. And then he's like, well, since it gets me to be able to spend more time with you, maybe it's not so bad. Like, damn. Dude's oil. Like, so slick. Just, holy crap. <laughs> there's, there's something moving in here. That'll be all. <laughs> Holy crap! And let's see, we have the yeah, you know, I've, evidently the 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 um, the zero matter has started communicating with Whitney, and it 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 said to her, "Feed me a stray rat." Rats, plural. Maybe she's pregnant. But yeah, um, the very, very creepy as she, you know, she, she picks it up and, and like tries to, to consume it into, into her hand and just, yeah. And, and that's, you know, the, the, um, let's see, was this, oh, right, yeah, that's, that's a little later. Yeah, in this bit, we just see that she, that she has a bunch of rats. Jarvis, the Jarvis got Peggy a button, and she immediately just ditches it. And he's like, I meant 
you know, so you could so you could blend in. Very amusing and Oh, that man has an injury in the exact same spot where you injured your assailant. What a coincidence. Jarvis, I get that you're not a spy. This does not come easily to you. I'm gonna need you to focus. And yeah, very cool with the the tranquilizer clever girl. And yeah, so we go back to 1920 and yeah, Uncle Bud is not my uncle. The the just yeah, really really creepy guy and just yeah, and you have this thing of yeah, you know, um do we have a uh hmm I have no idea. Uh, wait. Yeah, I guess C Cully. I'm not seeing a, uh, Wilma Cully. That's right. You know, Wilma, you know, yeah, she. I don't think she likes Bud either, particularly. But, yeah, you know, she sleeps with him so that he'll, you know, let them stay at the place and. and that's basically it, and yeah, you know, he's not willing to to marry them, ma marry for them to get married. I'm not asking him to marry the daughter for them to get married. And yeah, you know, as soon as he finds someone younger, he he throws them out. And I I do I do quite like you know so so yeah bud goes up to her and you know and he he can't stand that there is a woman near him not paying him a hundred percent of her attention you know there's that she's doing homework like let her be you know you're not even you're not there for her you're there for her mom and you you know so he he takes the pencil to try to get a reaction and then he's like you know why don't you give me a smile? I love her response. I'm thinking <laughs> that I I'd like to think that some someone picked that like started using that as a response after this episode first aired because that really is just so good. And yeah, you know, the I think this was this was probably the episode that best handled the misogyny of the time. Um, I'm hoping that they'll be able to to keep this up for the rest of the the season and the sadly that is the entire run. This was basically perfect. You know, we're seeing these. You know, the, the, basically Peggy and Whitney are amazing women surrounded by and weighed down by mediocre men and let's see. yeah and and yeah she starts doing yeah so you know cuts to her you know she's she, um she's like you know using the the pencil on the paper and then it cuts to present well, 1947 not present day and she's writing, you know, zero matter experimentation, num experiment number one. And, yeah, you know, the, the, um, she doesn't manage to, to get it to work immediately, but af not, not very long after she does. And Calvin, the thing he does, he's upset about, about the, the director being missing, is that if he were dead, that would be bad for the campaign, you know, because she's like, he drinks so much, he'd probably show up in a in a reservoir somewhere. It's just yeah. And and the one thing Calvin has against her saying that is it would be bad for the campaign. Just yeah. I love Edwin Jarvis's cop voice. Very, very fun. And and he actually, you know, Miss, would you please enter your domicile and close your do close your door? Okay. And yeah, you know we we in the audience knew that Edwin wasn't actually gonna kick down the door. He knew that if he pushes Hunt, 
enough, then, you know, yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna run out the back, and that's when Peggy can trank him, and, yeah, even though it was enough for a rhinoceros, it wasn't quite enough for him. Nobody told him that that was supposed to be enough. And, yeah, pretty good fight. I quite like the, like, I'm not, I wasn't sitting there thinking, I wonder if, you know, maybe she will actually lose, no, she's not going to lose the fight, but her being, like, choked was still very tense. And then she runs into Daniel. <laughs> So all of this is in the report. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it immediately. If there was nothing else, you know, as um, what happened to him? Ah, phew, it's a little bit too much to drink, if you know what I mean. That noise. So we um, there's a there's an animal in there. We're gonna we're gonna deal with it. And then you know here's. For a second there, after Hunt, like, spoke, I was wondering if Peggy was gonna be like, I'm throwing my voice, or something, you know, just, we, we taught it to, to speak English. Tone, uh, Howard has explained to me this very strange phenomena, where certain animals, if injured, develop the ability to speak English. But no, he, he realizes what it is and tries to help out with the interrogation. And yeah, literally, like, legitimately clever plan with the fake malaria. And yeah, we get a flashback where Peggy has been, you know, she's going to get to be a, a spy, as she had, you know, hoped when, when younger. And we later find out this was... Michael, you know, recommending that is why that happened. Which I will say, like, I... Michael kind of seemed like a jerk in the opening flashback, but, yeah, uh, I, I guess he, you know, he got nicer as he... Which, fair enough, you know, some... Some people are real jerks as, as kids and teenagers and then become good people when they're adults. Let's see. And... Um, yes, and, and after the, the... Yeah. The malaria thing, when, you know, the... Um, right, and I was... Yes. Um, the, um, the detail about... You know, oh, this was like the the you know he it's not actually malaria, but it's gonna feel like it. It's gonna really hurt, and yeah, and we see that Bud has cheated on Wilma, and you know he's he's tired of of banging the door, going Wilma, so he's leaving, and I really appreciate she like gets a set of claws there at the end, like, you go to hell, you go directly to hell, bud, you know, that was, yeah, very, very cool, and then we have this thing of, you know, she says, the, nobody's ever gonna respect your, your brain, they're only going to look at your beauty, and it cuts directly from that, you know, her looking into the mirror to Whitney in the 1947, and the scar is growing, you know. So the thing she had drilled into her head before the zero matter drilled into her head was the only thing that matter is now, you know, well, was supposedly already, she was, others were saying she was already, you know, losing her, her looks you know, the, the, I feel like, I'm not sure which sounds less condescending, because that is obviously what I'm going for, is it, is it to say that I, I don't think it, you know, is really for me to say, or if it, 
is it to to say i mean yeah if i'm if i'm being brutally honest i think she looks great i really don't but but you know that is perhaps also this thing of you know hollywood is afraid to cast someone who's not conventionally attractive but yeah the the yeah but you know we see in in 1947 scar grow i mean the scar is growing and let's see yeah so they do get some information out of hunt and then we have the yeah back with with the science the good guys doing science and yeah they apparently do put the word quantum in front of everything but yeah they they're going to do the raid but vernon and others show up and I love the scene between Peggy and Vernon with, you know, the, the, like, just, it's one of those scenes you can go, like, line by line, shot by shot. There's so many such great decisions there. You know, he's, he's trying to charm her when he says, you know, Thompson said you're an independent thinker. And she tries to, to, you know, she she's not having it. She just says, I'm sure he meant it as an insult, which, honestly, yeah, probably. But, you know, he's, he's trying to work her. And after he accepts that flattery will get him nowhere, which is completely accurate to Peg's character, especially in this kind of situation, then he starts threatening her. Because... He doesn't care if she likes him or not. He just, he sees a young woman and he thinks, oh, I can charm her. You know, once he accepts, oh, this, no, okay, we're going to, different tactic, you know. And notice the way that the camera goes from these, like, it's it seems like it starts out as a pleasant enough conversation, you know, but then it gets increasingly tense. You know the way it cuts between, you know some of the some of the shot lengths later in the scene get much shorter than earlier in the scene, and the yeah the camera placement implies this this yeah threat, and yeah we have this this line about you know he says something like you know you you should um, this might get very uh, difficult for you or something like that and she says I'll, I'm sure I'll be fine and then he says this, you know basically he says I wasn't I wasn't saying you you personally one person I was saying you all of those of you who are in my way you know or I guess in this case it's maybe just the two of them but yeah I'm not, you know, he's not only talking about Peggy, he is also referring to Sousa. Which I, I quite like, you know, Sousa, like, this other guy is, like, trying to, you know, he's like, according to this paper, you are you know, and, and Sousa, like, grabs the paper and throws it away, just, that was, yeah, very fun. Let's see, yeah, and, and with the raid called off, the only thing they can do is release Hunt and listen in and see yeah very very cool that entire sequence uh, right and and yes before before we get to the end of that we have the the flashback where we see you know, yeah we have one where Michael you know he's talking to Peggy as if Peggy as if they're still kids and is and that she isn't trying to make sure that her fiance doesn't get scared off which you know sadly a lot of men way too easy to scare off from you know I I'd, I'd like to think I've never done it but I've definitely known a lot of guys a lot of fellow guys fellow fellows that did yeah, but yeah, you know, he's like, oh, let's, let's, you know, have a, have a drinking contest, or, you know, oh, you know, why, why did you turn down the, the spy thing, and, you know, 
and yeah, then we see, you know, she's like preparing for the wedding, and then, you know, news comes from outside, and mom faints, and yeah, Michael has been killed in, in action. And great cut when you just, you have the, you know, the letter was on the, the, the thing, and, you know, she takes the letter and leaves the engagement ring. So, yeah, very, very clear. And, and yeah, it's like, you know, the... That's basically the only thing she has left of him is to to live the, the adventure that he tried to make sure she could. And, yeah, we are back to the... the to, to Whitney and Calvin talking to the the to hunt and I love that she cuts right through she you know Calvin is like saying things that really don't matter and and mercifully Whitney cuts right through and just says what did you tell her you know because the, there's the th yeah because because hunt is like oh you know it was the Peggy Carter lady and Cal was like, oh, how, how dare she? She can't do that to us. Uh, I will have her deported post-haste. And Whitney just immediately goes to, what did you tell her? Because that's the thing that actually matters here. You know, just, let's see. And... Um, Yeah, and then we we have the yeah we see Whitney get discovered by the the agent, uh, you know, who says I'm sh I bet you're really pretty when you smile, you know, another man who really who does not see anything else in her, but this time she's taking control. She's using the power that this guy completely underestimates her because the thing is he has no idea that she's a genius he has no idea that she like he you know she she is so much smarter than he is if he knew that he'd probably be like oh so I'm intimidated but because he has no idea because she's oh she's just a pretty face well that means that she can get the, you know, she can do this double identity thing. And yes, back in 1947, we end on the, yeah, she man, so yeah, she, she absorbs Hunt into the, the, um, the war wound and again, love that the, you know, on these Marvel TV shows, much more violent, much more harsh. Like, it's not one of these safe PG-13 deaths, although today PG-13 is can get very wild, but back then, it was they were playing it way too safe, in my opinion. And here, it's like, well, you know, his face is morphing as the... It's being swollen. It's a, yeah, and, and we see that the scar has grown significantly. So it's not just... You know, it, 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 the the bigger the thing she she c consumes with zero matter, the more the scar will grow. Yeah, uh, this is definitely my favorite episode so far. I really feel like this is they absolutely hit the the ah, what's the word? This is the exact yeah. This this works. This is how to do this show right. So some IMDb trivia for this episode and let's see. Yeah, so yeah, SOE was real, un unusual for the era, and as shown here, they did use women as field agents as they would arouse less suspicion. They might arouse other things, but not suspicion, than many male agents would. 
A lot of thought was put into the creation of Peggy's wedding dress, seen during a flashback to 1940 by costume designer Giovanna O. Tobra Milton. In 1940, new dresses were a luxury, so instead of silk, the body was made out of less expensive crepe. The trim consists of two different types of lace, implying that Peggy's mom used parts from her own wedding dress, as well as her grandmother's Victorian-era dress, as lace was in short supply. Bletchley Park in England is where German codes were deciphered and the place where the German Enigma code was cracked by a team that included smoke and mirrors. Code breakers were mostly recruited from the top academic and civil service posts, mostly by word of mouth. Jarvis mentions that Hedy Lamar is about to divorce her third husband. The character of actress scientist Whitney Frost is loosely based on Lamar, an actress who held a patent for frequency hopping guidance systems for torpedoes. Patented around the time of World War II, the technique was put into use by the U.S. military in the 1960s, and variations on this principle remain a critical component of wireless communications. Very cool. My hat is off to Miss Lamar. And let's See, we have the um, so I think that might um Yeah, so um, someone pointed out that the, um, let's see, yeah, um, yeah, Peggy says in flashback she'll discover, discuss the offer to switch to the SOE with her fiancé. As this was wartime, she'd definitely not be allowed to do any such thing, and let's see. Yeah, and the person goes on to opine. This reveals a staggering lack of knowledge by the writers. It reveals that they were more interested in having the episode play out the way they wanted it to. But, yeah, I've, I've been where this guy's at of, like, being frustrated at inaccuracy. So, yeah, I, I get it. That is it for so so yeah um gotta say much like the the zero matter scar on her the character of Whitney Frost is really growing on me I yeah I am not sure <sighs> yeah I'm I'm hoping that they'll be able to to keep this up because this really was. Yeah, this this was a solid episode. This was the first time that I felt the show completely worked. That the the thing that they were going for, which you know, there's a lot of shows that take a little while to to get. Like, if the first season hadn't been so short, let's see. I think season one is like eight episodes. I'll find it real quick. Yeah, eight episodes. This is episode four. So this would only be episode 12. If this was, like, a show with, you know, 22-episode uh, seasons, this would mean that it had taken them more than half of the first season to really hit their stride. There's a lot of shows that take longer than that. So, but yeah, um, they, they really, really nailed it. And I am really looking forward to seeing more of Whitney Frost. Right, and yes, and I love the, yes, I will, uh, tomorrow I will do another episode and I will leave you with the, I th was this also maybe the closing line? But yeah, you know, right after, right after she manages to, to consume, to, to, yeah, Mr. Hunt, you know, Calvin's like, what What did you do? And she replies, fixing another one of your problems.